Okay, uh, so in this video I'm going to explain about Yuma code and how avatars are created. Uh, so I'm starting with uh, a new project here, so we can uh, keep the, the, same, the same files. So first of all I need to explain about the libraries. Basically we have two libraries now and we are going to include a third one for uh, different uh, races um, but right now we have the overlay library that keep all the a list of all available overlays so each of those overlays is basically a prefab that is used as a container for keeping this this data overlay element and uh, basically it's responsible for uh, the the textures themselves uh, textures that will be used in combination for the resulting atlas in case of slot library we have the elements that will be combined for the final mesh of the avatar um, let me select the familiars. Okay, so in this case we have uh, the mesh itself that will be used, a sample material. Basically, this sample material uh, is telling what shader will be used here, and we have the index. That's basically telling what's exactly this element on the on the list itself because this will be serialized and it will be possible to use this on multiplayer games and massive multiplayer games so we have both Yuma crowd and Yuma customization those guys are basically the bridge the, the step for starting the Yuma creation and Yuma generator has in fact the, the hard work I mean it's responsible for actually processing the, the Yuma data I will start with Yuma Pro here we go okay so this is Yuma Road. I'll close these ones for now. So uh, as I've explained it, we have the libraries. We have the, those two prefabs from male and female avatar. As uh, both of them use the same uh, bond structure, but as the bonds are positioned in a different way, they, they need to be unique. Uh, this will probably become a, the library of races. I mean, as male and female require different prefabs, we are also including those, but we could have extremely different stuff like dragons, horses, things like that, using the same system for adjusting shape and and this kind of feature. We have Atlas Resolution Adjust. This will be later uh, renamed for Atlas Resolution Scale. We have basically the, the those two are only for, for really creating the, the avatars themselves, telling the, the script when, when to start creating avatars. So let me get in the in the right place. Basically, this code here is simply creating the avatar, asking for for generate uh, one Yuma to do the do it do the real work, and at generate one Yuma, we are actually instantiating the avatar based on the prefab. And after that, we are setting some some data. 
You see, uh, here we we define something that I call the the race type as female or male. The same will apply for different um, different races that require a different rig itself. And let me get to the to this part here. Oh, sorry. Need to get here. Okay, here, right. So when I'm setting Yuma data, first of all, I'm creating a new recipe. A recipe basically is a container for uh, all necessary information that's used for creating the Yuma itself. We are later setting other information, but we are also doing some really important thing. It's this part. Here I'm telling that Yuma, this Yuma being created, should update its mesh, shape, and texture. This means it will, after creation, it will calculate a new mesh. Uh, the shape deformation and the final atlas. And I'm actually telling this to happen. And after that, uh, we have also the process of actually generating the, the shape, the Yuma shape. This is done based on uh, Yuma DNA. Well, Yuma DNA basically is a, a set of values. Each value is given some kind of influence over a bone or a set of bones that will, in consequence, uh, deform the and create the final final shape. So here I'm simply creating random data for each of those values. Um, you can remember those from, from the sliders themselves. Uh, here I'm creating those by random. In, in the custom, customization, I'm doing this using the sliders, but it's the same thing. You know? OK, and uh, this piece of code is not used anymore. Uh, I will remove this in the following versions. And there is something really important that's above here. This is actually the place where we are defining the slots. I mean defining what will will you combine it for creating the Yuma avatar. So I'm I start defining the, the the skin color that we'll be using. And for male or female avatar, I have a completely different way of creating the, the slot data. Because I really wanted to show you that it's possible to handle this in different ways. So for a male avatar, I create a list. You see? Uh, slot data list inside the humor recipe, so all necessary data is always uh, being included on humor recipe. And I'm telling that it will have seven elements. For the female avatar, I'm, I'm using a dynamic list, so I, I can add as many slots I want. For the male avatar, as I already know how many elements I, I will be including, I have a, an array for that. So here we have the first slot. It will be um, the male eyes. You see, you can also notice I'm accessing accessing the slot library for that. And here is an interesting part. I'm 
including an overlay for the mail eyes. This overlay is also uh, for the eye itself, but it receives a color. So let me show you this overlay. It's this one. It's the, the same for a female and male. You see? Uh, this, this guy here, you can notice there is an alpha channel that carries a mask. And this mask is what tells the, the solution to know which areas will receive this color variation and the areas that will keep the original color. So we only give the eye color uh, in the right place. Here for um, the male face, it's a, a bit different. You, you can notice I only have one line. And I'm including both the slot name and the color. When I, I, I create this slot and the final color, this color will change the entire texture. So if I, I'm using an overlay, the, the process will only define the, the color for the masked, non-masked area. In this case here, it is defining this, this uh, color edges for the entire texture. The same is happening here. For the torso, it is also receiving the same color edges, but it's also receiving an overlay for the underwear, and this overlay is receiving a random color. Those um, is extra lines here are for creating the rest of the body. But in this case, the, those are different. This is the old uh, solution I had before implementing this one. For this version, it's still possible to use this. For the following versions, I will uh, not really support this because this is much more efficient and uh, better, better way of handling the, the slots. Okay, so uh, we are almost on the time limit for this video. I will stop recording here, and we'll keep this, uh, the, keep the rest of this video in a, in the next one, the following one. So I hope you you guys are having some, some help with this, the, those videos, and uh, you're having some fun with Yuma itself. So. Uh, that's it guys, uh, until the next video, see ya.